essential question. What are some ways you are brave? The Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn, illustrated by Ruth E. Harper and Nancy M. Leak. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please, may I stay home with you? Now, as good readers read, we try to figure out what a section or part of a story is mostly about to help us understand it better. On this page, I can see that Chester really wants to stay home and the details that I read support that. He wants to play with his friends, his toys, read books, and swing on his swing. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently. Even if they seem strange and scary at first. But you will love school once you start. Authors plan out stories that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Good readers look for a problem that's introduced at the beginning of a story. After reading the first few pages of this story, we can think about the problem. Well, I see that Chester does not want to go to school, and that seems to be the problem at the beginning of this story. You'll make new friends and play with new toys read new books, and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Remember that as good readers read, they look for what a section or part of a story is mostly about to help them understand it better. On these pages, his mom tells Chester that nights at school seem as warm and cozy as days at home. That is the main idea of this section. Once we find the main idea, we look for details that give more information about it. On these pages, I can see that she says Chester will make new friends, play with new toys, read new books, and swing on a new swing. Those details support the idea that school will also be fun. Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What, what kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand? asked Chester. What's that? I'll show you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand up his arm and into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely, and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, mommy loves you, mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now, do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, when you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Earlier, we identified, or figured out, the problem in the beginning. Good readers look for ways the characters try to solve the problem in the middle of a story. In the beginning, we learned that the problem was that Chester didn't want to go to school. After reading more, we can look for ways his mom and Chester try to solve the problem. Oh! I see that his mom told Chester the secret of the kissing hand. She kissed his hand and told him to hold on to her kiss. She's trying to make him feel better. Let's keep reading to see if it works. Chester loved his kissing hand. 
Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Remember, good readers look to see if the beginning problem was solved as they read. In the beginning, we learned that Chester did not want to go to school. After reading on, we learned that his mom told Chester about the secret of the kissing hand. Now, we are looking to see if that helped. <gasps> yes, the kissing hand did help Chester. We read that he grinned or smiled as he stood in front of his school, so he must be feeling better. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. Remember that as good readers read, they look for what a section of a story is mostly about to help them. On these pages, Chester tells his mom that she has a kissing hand too. Let's look for details that tell about his mom's kissing hand. Well, I read here that Chester took his mother's hand, unfolded her fingers, and then kissed the center of her hand. These details all describe the main idea of his mom receiving a kissing hand from Chester. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you. Good readers look for a beginning, middle, and end as they read. We read the last part of the story. The story ends with Chester scampering, or running off, to school as his mom watches him. Then his mom places her kissing hand on her cheek and thinks, Chester loves you.